Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar exploring the science behind professional punch and die maintenance and how it will improve your profitability. My name is Marian Adongia, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at iHolland and your host for today. We'll have a question and answer session at the very end of the presentation, and we would love as many questions as possible from you guys. So now I'll quickly tell you how you can send those questions through. The first is by using the GoToWebinar screen. On the webinar console, which is usually docked on the right-hand side of your screen, there's a question box. You can use this at any time throughout the webinar or during the Q&A session at the very end to type in any questions you have. We absolutely love questions, and if we don't get a chance to answer them all during the Q&A, then we'll get an answer to you either by phone or by email. The most relevant ones related to the topic will be answered live. We also have a few social media channels available and you can find us all on the addresses shown here on the screen. If you want to ask us questions or just say hi, my colleague Alex is available on Twitter and the other social media accounts. Just use the hashtag tablet tooling or message us direct. At the end of the webinar, you'll find an exit poll asking you what you found useful about today's presentation. And of course, more importantly, what we can do to make our future webinars even better. If you can spare a few minutes to complete the survey when you exit the webinar, it'd be very much appreciated. And we'll also give you a special gift to say thank you. Overall, the presentation today will last for about 40 minutes, after which we'll have the Q&A session. Today, your presenters are Michael Oxford and Liam Preston, both of whom you might recognize from some of our previous webinars. Mike is our research and development engineer, helping to develop iHolland's tooling and equipment range, including the Pharmacote range. And Liam is our sales and service engineer and his main responsibilities are supporting customers with all of their pharma care related technical queries and training. So now without any further ado, I'll pass you over to Mike who'll kickstart the presentation. Hi everyone. In this webinar, we will be discussing the steps required to keep your tooling in optimum condition and ready for production. In each section, we will discuss the reason for each step, the available options, what options we recommend and the science behind the processes. Starting with step one, firstly, we're going to look into cleaning processes. Cleaning of tooling is a necessity and should be considered the most commonly employed maintenance step vital to any tablet manufacturer for a variety of reasons. The first of which is to prepare the tooling for either usage or storage. This includes ensuring that any product stuck to the tooling that could be potentially harmful in terms of corrosion is removed. It is also important to remove any stuck product from the punch tip face that could lead to a sticking or picking issue and producing visually undesirable tablets and tablets with poor weight stability. More importantly, in some cases, leaving stuck product on the punch tips can cause the tooling design to become overloaded by weight of double compression. This can cause tip breakages, which can lead to damage to the tablet press. Lastly, should a set of tooling be used to compress more than one product, effective cleaning is vital to removing the possibility of cross-contamination between products, which can be a very expensive error to rectify should trace of one product be found in the tablet of another product. This can lead to expensive product recalls, or worse still, legal issues. Let's look at the different methods that can be employed for cleaning processes. These can be categorized as either manual or automatic processes, and the type of cleaning employed will often be dependent upon the standard operating procedures of the manufacturer. The lowest cost methods are typically manual processes, such as hand washing with water or solvents. Solvents can be used to reduce the risk of residue being left on the tooling after cleaning, but these processes can be laborious and the effectiveness of the cleaning is dependent upon the skills and dedication of the operators. Also, these processes can be very time consuming as usually only one tool can be washed at a time. So when cleaning tooling from a high volume tablet press, this can take hours. There is also care that needs to be taken with solvent cleaning due to the irritant nature of solvents and the danger of handling and containing flammable materials. Semi-automated methods such as ultrasonic cleaning will remove these problems as many tools can be cleaned in a single batch process. These can produce excellent results in short cycle times. 
With some effort, these systems can also be validated. However, when a single machine is used to clean multiple products, validation can be difficult and some solvent cleaning can still be required to ensure residu residual levels are low so there is no cross-contamination. There are alternate systems such as industrial washing machines that can include cleaning, drying and multiple rinsing stages all in one machine. They can also be very dangerous to certain steels in terms of causing corrosion as they are often closed loop systems which use high temperatures and can lead to steam generation in enclosed spaces. This can accelerate corrosion in a short space of time. Factoring in the positive and negative points of these processes, iHolland's recommended method is ultrasonic cleaning. Ultrasonic cleaning is reliable and repeatable, making it great for cleaning sets of tools in one simple cycle. As long as suitable cleaning solutions such as a detergent and corrosion inhibitor are always used, then it is considered safe for tool steels, although the user must ensure that the tooling is dried thoroughly after cleaning. Some ultrasonic cleaners can have the ability to vary the intensity of the cleaning power, meaning that a heavily soiled tool can still be cleaned in a normal cleaning cycle. Some models are available with modes that create a varied frequency field for more homogeneous cleaning in all areas of the tank. I Holland's ultrasonic cleaners are fitted with automatic heating controls to aid in the cleaning process and purpose designed tooling holders can be provided for most tool types which reduce the risk of tooling damage through undesired tip to tip contacts during cleaning. In terms of the science behind the process, cleaning can be summarized as a simple process that consists of four principal components. These are namely time, temperature, mechanism and chemistry. And these principles work together to achieve a cleaning cycle. Time and temperature are simple. The chemistry refers to the effectiveness of the detergent and the mechanism is the method of cleaning, be it a brush, a nozzle or an ultrasonic process. The increase in effectiveness of any of these steps in the process, i.e. increasing the temperature or increasing the cleaning time, will reduce the requirements for other parts, such as allowing for a less aggressive mechanism or detergent. Ultrasonic cleaning has a very effective mechanism that means that each of the other principles influences can be reduced. For example, a shorter cleaning cycle time and a temperature that does not adversely affect the tooling can be employed along with an unaggressive pH neutral detergent. The mechanism employed in ultrasonic cleaning is known as sonication. This uses transducers producing sound waves that pass through the cleaning solution in the tank. This results in the constant creation of millions of tiny bubbles during the cleaning cycle. These bubbles rise through the cleaning solution and implode upon impact with the punches, dislodging any stuck product from the tooling. Dependent upon the unit, the tanks can hold large numbers of tools that can all be cleaned in a short cleaning cycle of typically under 10 minutes. High Holland's detergents and corrosion inhibitors are also specially formulated for tablet tool steel with pH neutral solutions that protect the tooling from corrosion even after the cleaning cycle. A corrosion inhibitor, such as the KS corrosion inhibitor, works by creating a primary oxide film which surrounds the tooling with a protective layer preventing corrosion. The inhibitor molecules attach themselves to the surface of the tool, preventing reactive materials from attacking the steel. Other features available on iHolland's ultrasonic cleaners include degassing functions, as shown on the image to the top left of the screen, that prepares the cleaning solution prior to cleaning in order to maximize the efficiency of the cleaning cycle. Degassing removes any trapped air or dissolved gases from the solution that could impede the effectiveness of the cleaning. iHolland also provide baskets and fixturing that is coated in a special resin that prevents any possibility of galvanic corrosion occurring during the cleaning cycle. This can occur when dissimilar metals are cleaned at the same time, where the more dominant of the two materials will begin to corrode the less dominant material. Having coated baskets prevents this phenomenon from occurring. I Holland's fixturing is also designed to orientate the tooling so that the ultrasonic bubbles implode in the required areas, for example, the tip faces, where any granulate is most likely to need removing. This gives one of the most effective cleaning cycles available for tablet tooling. The next stage of the seven-step process is assessment. 
And this is a step that should be conducted before and after each press campaign to ensure that tooling is in a good condition and ready for use. Assessment is often referred to as inspection and proper inspection of tooling using suitable equipment is helpful for a number of reasons. Finding any damage that may have occurred to tooling through usage or handling is key as even the smallest knocks on the tip edge can lead to an eventual fracture through fatigue. Assessing tablet tooling for signs of wear on the tip face can also help to ensure that tablet detail and definition are maintained through the life of the tool. And assessing any wear around the tip edges can highlight issues that could lead to capping, delamination of tablets if not detected. It's important to assess coated tooling for any signs of wear as a condition of functional coatings, such as those used to prevent sticking, can be vital to smooth production. Holland's wear indicator layer has proved valuable for highlighting signs of coating wear that could impact future production campaigns. Also, proper assessment could be key to finding any press setup issues that could cause problems during production, such as tip misalignment or die pocket wear. This should include the punch barrels, necks, heads and keys if they are present. It's important to remember that damage can occur at any time and finding it early can prevent more costly problems further down the production process. There are many different methods available for tooling assessment and these can vary substantially in levels of magnification, ease of use, image capture and of course price. One of the first methods that people discard is the naked eye. This when experienced and trained can be very good for detecting large defects on tooling such as burrs. And other than operator time there is no cost to this method. There are however some drawbacks to using the naked eye, not least of which is magnification. With the eye, objects can only be seen at a one-to-one -one scale and finding damage on tooling can be subjective as not everyone will interpret the same clues. <coughs> it's perhaps, as is perhaps expected, we cannot capture the image for use later with an eye. Loops and magnifying glasses have some benefit over the naked eye. They do offer some magnification, but typically this is no more than 10 times. However, they are usually portable and can be easily taken into the press room for a quick assessment. Also, many of the negatives with the naked eye are still present for this type of equipment. Whilst there is some magnification, this cannot spot everything and damage can be missed. Again, there is no method of image capture with a loop. Digital equipment, such as cameras or microscopes, offer many advantages over standard optical equipment, such as allowing high magnification, giving detailed assessment of any small damage to the tooling. These devices can often be supplied with built-in lighting, which is very important when looking for signs of damage. Most digital systems can also be connected to computers, which allows the image to dis be displayed on a screen. This does, however, reduce the portability of the system. They can be relatively expensive when compared to optical systems, but they do come with some very useful features. To th show the difference between the methods, the image above shows the same punch under various items of equipment with differing magnifications. As you can see, the desk camera shows far more detail, even when this is at a lower range of its magnification. For these reasons, iHolland's preferred method is a digital microscope. Damage to tooling can often start very small, but this will grow over time. Seeing this early with the help of a digital system is vital. The system features up to 300 times magnification, which when coupled with LED lighting, allows the user to see very fine detail and previously hidden details such as small cracks that may be formed. A full HD output allows the image to be viewed on a large screen with none of the detail being lost. This is great for showing and discussing faults between multiple operators. Also, the autofocus function and stable standard make the system user friendly and therefore capturing an image is a simple task. Because images can be captured, they can then be shared with senior management or even tooling manufacturers should further advice be required. On to the science behind assessment. When trying to determine the root cause of an issue, sometimes high quality magnification images can be pivotal in finding that something that would be unseen to the naked eye. The series of images at the top show a cause and effect scenario. In the final image, we can clearly see headwear, but we do not know the root cause of this. Headwear can be detrimental as it can lead to damage to compression rollers, which can then be transferred to other tools in the press. With further analysis under high magnification, we can see striations in the first image. These are lines and ridges on the punch tip outer diameter, and also die ball wear in the middle. 
This indicates that there has been punch tightness and a lack of clearance between the die bore and the tip. This results in preventing free movement of the punch, which has resulted in headwear. Also, the example at the bottom right of the screen shows proper assessment of a tip fracture. It can show the origin point of the fracture and give an indication as to its cause. Numbered areas on the image indicate the initiation point of the fracture, one, and the direction of the breakage, two. In this case, the punch with tip was sheared from the punch as the tool jammed in the press. Following that example, the image on screen is that of another punch tip that is fractured. The initiation point and direction of the fracture indicated by the arrows show that the breakage occurred from the inside of the tip rather than the outside of the tip. This helps to eliminate some potential causes such as tip misalignment or punch tightness. The breakage occurring where it has leads to the conclusion in this case that overpressuring of the punch was the root cause of the tip breakage. If damage has been found on tooling, then the next logical step is to repair it, which is step three of the seven step process. Repairing of tooling is something that has been common since tablet production began, and the increasing complexity of tablet designs has meant that repair operations require increasing skill and delicacy to perform. Typically, with the repair step, we are looking to restore tooling that has been lightly damaged back to a usable condition. Removing damage is important as minor knocks could cause defects that could transfer to tablets, or worse, could cause damage to the tablet press should a tip breakage occur. When repairing tooling, it is always vital to consider why the tool itself requires repairing in the first place. For example, could there be problems with press setup or are our manual handling procedures robust enough? And also, is our storage method adequate? We'll come to that soon. It's important to consider if the repair work itself could lead to more damage. Of course, the most common reason for tooling repair is due to handling damage, be it from punch tip contact during cleaning and polishing processes to poor storage systems. Handling damage accounts for 85% of all tool damage. Minimising the amount of manual handling that the tooling is subjected to with the equipment available in the seven step process is key to reducing damage that could cause potential tip fractures when producing tablets. When used in conjunction with a suitable abrasive compound or paste, brushes are very good for repairing light surface damage such as corrosion and scratches. They are available in a range of sizes, but typically they are no bigger than 20 millimetres. Because they are this small, they are perfect for getting inside punch tips, where larger polishing mops cannot reach. These brushes are made from materials that are designed for poly applying polishing compounds and are suitable for a GMP environment. Lapping sticks and emery paper are typically used against a rotating tool in a motorised chuck. The emery paper is abrasive but flexible, and when this is used with a lapping stick, rigidity and even pressure can be applied to the tool. Emery paper is available in various different grains and for different applications. When using emery paper, it's important to start with the coarsest grade required and then finish with the finest grade available. These are typically used to remove small burrs, stains, corrosion and scratches on the exterior surface of the tool. Motorised hand pieces are used with felt bobs and polishing compounds to repair punch cups of plain round tooling. It's important that only plain round tooling is repaired in this manner, as the highly abrasive nature of this method can easily damage embossing or braid lines. The speed the motorised handpiece can achieve means that very little pressure needs to be applied by the user, which reduces the risk of damaging the tool. Diamond compounds are available in multiple grades, and again, these should be used in descending order from coarsest to finest. iHolland can supply a repair kit containing all the basic materials required to repair minor damage to tooling. This includes polishing brushes, lapping sticks and emery paper of various abrasive grades, along with the required motorised equipment necessary for effective repairing tooling. Also, dye pocket cleaners and polishing paste can be used to restore the surface finish of tooling to required levels and prepares tooling for production when on site. When assessing damage to tooling, it's important to determine which damage can be repaired and which cannot. Have in mind that chips and knocks on tip edges can weaken the punch tip, creating what could be an initiation point for a tip breakage. There is a subjective nature to repairing, which means each operator may have different views on what is repairable and what is not. As each tip design is different, each design may have different allowable press forces and the forces that the damage areas can withstand. Also, different punch materials have different tensile strengths, 
and again the factor of tensile strength reduction and the UTS will be different for each knock and chip on the tip edge. What this means is the operator must understand the limits of their tooling and caution should be taken when trying to repair a tool as the danger of causing press damage can be much more expensive than the cost of a replacement tooling. It's worth mentioning also that repairing operations on coated tools should only be undertaken with caution. When coatings are applied to a tool as standard, the entire tool is covered in a functional layer and the application of abrasive polishers could affect the coating efficiency and performance of the tool. The image on screen now shows a tool that has been heavily polished on the tip face and the abrasive method has removed the coating. When an indicator solution such as copper sulfate is applied to this tip face, it reacts with the areas where the coating has been removed and shows in the copper colour scene. Now we can move on to a step that will be critical to most, if not all, tablet manufacturers, and that is measurement. Measuring tooling is again a key step that should be undertaken routinely throughout the tooling life. The key points are to ensure that the critical dimensions are intolerant, especially those of the punch working and overall lengths, as these can have a large impact on tablet weight variation, hardness and thickness. Also, measurements should be undertaken ensuring clearances between punches and dies are within tolerance, especially after repair operations, and that the working lengths of upper and lower punches are matched to ensure tablet consistency. This is a feature that iHolland's tool management system can determine. It should be said that all iHolland tooling is manufactured to tight tolerance specifications, so no matching of punches and dies is required prior to usage. But this is not the case with all tooling manufacturers, or indeed after repair operations, where the tool's dimensions may have been altered through material removal. As with the assessment step, what methods you will use to measure your tooling will be dependent upon the accuracy required. The most basic equipment may be low cost, but will not have the accuracy and repeatability to measure tip features such as the tip diameters or working lengths with any accuracy. Digital units offer much higher levels of accuracy and many can sometimes be connected to measuring systems such as iHolland's tool management system to extract data into the software. They are a good investment and have the micron level accuracy required for diameter measures of punches or length measurements. They are, however, what are known as contact methods of measurement which can leave scuffs and marks on tooling when care is not taken or equipment is worn or damaged. There are optical laser systems available that require no tool contact, whilst also having very high levels of accuracy and repeatability. These can, however, come at a high cost. Obviously, as tablet tooling has fine tolerances and sometimes delicate tip designs, whilst also requiring high accuracy measurement, we recommend a HNC laser for length measurements. As mentioned, the laser requires no contact with the punch tip face, which means no potential damage to the tip surface or coating, as can occur with contact measurement equipment. Regarding the science behind measuring, there are other aspects to measurement beyond that of the tooling, such as tablet weights and tolerances, that need to be considered when producing tablets. Clearances between punches and dies are also vital to allow free movement, but also prevent granule from penetrating the clearances, which can lead to multiple issues from high ejection forces to die ball ringing. There are tooling designs and dimensions that can become tailored for one specific product in terms of the dwell time required, the tip and die clearances, as well as the key positioning for takeoff. Ensuring the tooling you have is suitable for its functions and that all specifications have remained within tolerance on the original drawings is vital to smooth production. All tooling should be supplied in specification to an agreed tolerance between the manufacturer and the supplier. We know that over the life of a tool, due to tablet press and granule variability, tooling will wear unevenly through its life. It is reasonable and important to set up a greater in-process tolerance that takes this wear into consideration. Once a tool has been used in a press, it is important to switch from new tolerances to in-process tolerances. Otherwise, tooling would likely be scrapped well before it reached the end of its useful life. Moving on, an important step is ensuring the surface finish is maintained with polishing processes to keep the punch tip surface in the same condition as it was when the tooling was new. Polishing can be important, 
as all tooling will eventually wear through usage and deterioration of surface finish on the tip face is mainly caused by the abrasive effects of tablet production. While the rate of wear is dependent on the abrasiveness of the formulation, it will eventually lead to a roughening of the surface that can be mirrored onto the tablet or in some cases be an initiation area for a sticking issue. Embossing can be worn to sharp edges which will affect the readability of lettering on tablets and also the land of the punch which will weaken the tool and could lead to breakage issues. Polishing can reduce these effects and also re repair small amounts of damage strengthening the punch as the land can be blended with the polishing process. Available methods of polishing can be manual or automatic. Manual polishing is typically inexpensive but the quality of results can be subjective to the operator's skills and the quality of polishing can vary throughout a set. Manual polishing requires varying grades of brush or polish dependent upon the accessibility of the area that needs polishing and the surface finish required. It should also be noted that manual methods of polishing are not ideal for coated tooling as due to its abrasive nature it can be very easy for an operator to remove the coating on the tooling if care is not taken even on hard coatings such as hard chromium. This is less of an issue with automated polishing as this is a much more controlled method of polishing that can polish multiple tools simultaneously to a high quality repeatable finish when a suitable process is developed. With this there is also the added benefit of no human involvement during the polishing process leaving the operators free for other responsibilities. The units can be higher in cost, but the investment is small when large volumes of tooling can be polished. The time saved is substantial, whilst also adding quality, care and repeatability to the maintenance system. As well as developing a series of media and polishers for polishing coated and uncoated tablet tooling, iHolland have developed specialist fixtures, including fixtures for all common tooling types, manufactured from an FDA approved material as well as polishers and medias that produce high quality repeatable finishes. The medias iHolland have available are either natural walnut or maize based medias that are excellent at absorbing polish. This gives the media 100 hours of effective polishing before requiring changing. We could also supply a plastic media that together with the suitable polishing paste can give excellent polishing results should a nut free environment be required. Maintenance is required to sustain the consistency of the polishing process and a measured amount of polish should be added in small quantity every 10 working hours to refresh the media to its peak condition. The MF polisher's mechanism uses a double rotation motion for polishing the tooling. This drags the punches through a soft media charged with polishing paste. The result is that every tool is polished all over to the required effect. The fixtures have been developed to angle the punch tips at a calculated angle to maximise the effects of the polishing on the tip face, regardless of the tip shape or design. The process itself is not an aggressive polishing mechanism. It has a very low material removal rate, which means it is suitable for very minor deburring and rounding, with no changes to the punch dimensions or geometry. This gentle effect also means that the surface finish of coatings can be rejuvenated without removing the coating which would not be possible with manual polishing. This gentle effective polishing is important when considering embossed tooling as manual polishing techniques can erode lettering to a point where the embossing can become illegible on the tablets. Automated polishing has a much better effect at restoring surface finishes without removing material. And the sixth step of the seven step process is lubrication and should be used in between campaigns when tooling is to be stored for any length of time. Tooling steels are designed to make tools. The alloying elements used in the manufacture of steels are there to give them high tensile strength and toughness, but this can leave little room for alloying elements that protect against corrosion. Stainless steel tooling has a higher chromium content, giving better protection against corrosion, but most of the tooling manufactured for tablet production is not stainless steel due to its lower hardness and lower allowable press force when compared to low chromium steel. For this reason, Uncoated steel tooling needs to be protected when not in use, especially if the environment that the tools will be stored in is in a humid country which has a moisture rich atmosphere. Therefore, we recommend applying a lubricant to the tool when it is not being used. 
The industry of corrosion protection is extensive and there are thousands of types and grades of oil that can be used to protect tooling at low cost. These are however easily removed which means they are only suitable for short term storage. A more effective form of corrosion prevention is using greasers. These are more viscous than oils and typically give the tooling longer protection. With that in mind, greases can be harder to clean off the tools before use. There are other specialist materials available such as volatile corrosion inhibitors. These create an invisible molecular protection layer around the metal surface. These inhibitors begin to deteriorate from when they are manufactured, so gauging the amount of time they are effective for can be difficult. iHolland's recommended methods are oils and greases for the following reasons. Firstly, any lubricant that is applied to a tool should be food grade. These comply with important regulations that are found in the tableting industry. It's important to consider the amount of time the tools are likely to be stored for. If this period is short and the tools are being used regularly, then a food grade oil will be suitable. If the storage time is going to be longer, then we would recommend that food grade grease is used. As oil is less viscous than grease, it has a tendency to drain off the tool over a period of time. This is why we recommend a grease for long storage periods. When applied correctly, these cover the tooling completely and provide a protective layer from the effects of the environment to reduce the possibility of any corrosion affecting the tooling. As pointed out, oils and greases can drain from the tooling over a period of time. It's worth routinely checking the tools just to make sure they are still protected. As previously mentioned, tablet tooling is manufactured from steel. Steel contains iron as its primary ingredient, along with other alloying elements. Iron makes up around 90% of most tablet tool steels, except stainless steel. Corrosion is where the iron in the steel reacts with oxygen in the air or in a liquid, forming iron oxide, which has a reddish brown colour. This either stays on the surface or penetrates the steel. There are other forms of corrosion accelerated by chemistry or energy but the penetrating corrosion, known as pitting or surface corrosion, are the most common forms. Surface corrosion can be reduced with automated polishing, as the roughness of the surface will be reduced, which in turn reduces the surface area, creating less crevices for corrosion to develop. We can protect tooling against the effects of the environment with coatings or high chromium steels, but these materials are sometimes not required if the tooling can be stored with an effective lubricant to prevent corrosion. The image at the bottom of the slide shows the effects of low chromium steel for two weeks with and without corrosion prevention in a humid environment. Other more aggressive forms of corrosion include pitting and intergranular corrosion. Pitting corrosion has the effect of weakening the steel and when there is enough of it, the strength of the steel can be affected, which can weaken the tensile strength of the material, making tip breakage a possibility. Intergranular corrosion is common in poorly manufactured steels, as the corrosion forms in between the alloying elements of the steel along the grain boundaries. Iholland steels are manufactured as standard using a refinement process known as electroslag melting. This creates a much more homogeneous steel, which drastically reduces the possibility of intergranular corrosion by refining the steel after manufacturing to reduce the inclusions in the steel that would affect its performance. The final stage of the seven step process is storage and what equipment should be used to protect the tooling when it is not required for use. Storage is important for everyone, but especially production facilities manufacturing multiple products where the requirement for organisation is important to ensure that the tooling can be ready when required. When regularly moving tools around areas, the possibility of handling damage is large and it could be easy to mix and misplace tools that could have disastrous consequences. Proper storage of tools is also vital to preventing damage occurring when the tooling is not in use. There are many low cost containers that can house tooling, but will do little to protect them from damaging contact. Also, organization is difficult and potential for mixing tooling can be disastrous if companies have differing dosage products and tooling is mixed up. There are a variety of storage containers that can be used these typically have fixtures and fittings designed specifically for tools, but identifying the individual tools can be difficult. They require organization and the possibility of dropping these whilst in transport could have expensive results. 
These containers are reasonably good for taking tooling to the press suite, but for storage, there are better options, such as cabinets and more heavy duty systems. Storage cabinets have the ability to locate tooling into their own locations, such as drawers. They are especially helpful for tool rooms that have large volumes of tools where mixing sets is a risk. They can also have purpose-built fixtures to reduce the risk of tooling making contact with each other. Cabinets are typically easy to lock and store tooling securely. And with all this in mind, cabinets are the most suitable choice. Which is why the versatile cabinets are iHolland's preferred choice. These cabinets are available in both painted mild steel or stainless steel. The cabinets have locking capability for secure storage, as well as anti-tilt functions to prevent dangerous accidents and specially designed plastic trays to ensure that the tooling is safe and organized for when it is required. The high weight limit on the drawers also allows a whole set, no matter what the tool type, to be stored in one drawer. These removable trays are designed to suit different types of tooling and hold punches and dies together. The trays are stackable, which allows increased capacity per drawer and are designed in such a way that they keep each tip apart from the other punches so that no damage occurs that could eventually lead to tableting issues. As part of the storage system, the trays are also removable and can be taken to the press suite on specially designed trolleys. This eliminates the need to manually handle the tools until they are being loaded into the turret. Also, the cabinets, as with most iHolland Pharmacare equipment, are manufactured from stainless steel, which is amongst the easiest metal material to clean and the material of choice for clean room environments. As previously mentioned, the versatile cabinets are equipped with anti-tilt functions, which means that only one drawer can be opened at any one time. A special latching mechanism locks the other drawers, so the cabinet cannot tilt over, which would obviously have severe consequences not only to the tooling, but the operator also. The important things to take away from this presentation are that cleaning is important to ensure that tooling is free from dirt or contamination. Once the tooling is cleaned, it can be properly assessed for signs of damage. If damage has been found, then it is important to use the correct procedures and equipment to repair them. Tooling should be measured routinely and after repair to ensure it is still within specification. The surface finish of tablet tooling needs to be maintained and the best way to do this is automated polishing. Food grade lubricant should be applied to protect tooling from corrosion. And finally, tooling should be stored in a secure, organized manner so it is ready for use. As discussed earlier in this presentation, 85% of tooling damage occurs due to poor handling. Therefore, it is important to follow a planned professional maintenance procedure with suitable equipment to protect and maximize the usable life of the tool.